Praise the Lord. We've been talking about inner healing. That's new to some folks. And let me say that some people, when they get saved, boy, they just take off in the Lord and, and are able to uh, progress, uh, learn, commit, and serve the Lord without a whole lot of problems. I want you to listen to me now. <laughs> and if you're one of them, hallelujah. But there's many folks that uh, become Christians, and they still have problems. And you've got to know where the problems are coming from. That makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, a lot of our problems come from unrenewed minds. A lot of past teachings that we might have got in certain churches or just the world lodged up in our minds and have become strongholds, and we act and react out of those strongholds, okay? Uh, my father was one that for many years we prayed for him. He was an alcoholic. But when he gave his life to the Lord, and he had all kind of problems before he was saved. And he got saved, and believe it or not, the preacher took counsel from him. <laughs> God just did a tremendous work in my dad for 30 years. He walked straight, he became responsible. He became a man of uh, faithfulness. I mean, on and on and on, I could describe my father. And that's what salvation did for him. Susan is another one that had very little problems. <coughs> when she was saved at 14 years old, and she had some. But she just took right off, got into the Word of God, and, and, and was uh, just somebody that read the scriptures and got her mind renewed and was on the ball, and she's still on the ball at 79. Now, Brother Bob, the only one problem I had, and that was Bob. <laughs> anybody, can, any, can, can anybody identify with Bob? <laughs> okay. But God still loved me, and God still loves you, okay? And so if you don't understand this teaching, then just my desire is if it, for you to learn that you might help others. Did you hear what I just said? To know these truths, because if you're going to minister to people, you're going to meet people with all kinds of problems. Okay? And so this will help you. If you've got children, this teaching will help you to raise your kids. Because you just cannot. They're going to have issues. Listen to me. They are going to have issues. And you've got to know how to sit down with them, take the word of the Lord with the power of the Holy Spirit on you, and teach them how to solve those issues in their lives. There will be people that won't, they won't like. And they'll create an, a, an attitude that will cause them not to like a particular teacher. Which, which will, will cause them to grow up with certain wrong thinking and attitudes about all teachers, perhaps. I don't know. So, so listen to what we teach. Keep this handy on you. Now, let's read that scripture. The sp <clears throat> and Jesus is speaking here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, that is Christ himself, the Son of God, to preach the good news, the gospel. Remember, gospel is good news. To the poor, he has sent me to an announce release to the captives. A lot of people are in captivity by just the way they think, okay? And recovery of sight to the blind, now, that's physical and also spiritual. How many people are blind to spiritual truths? And to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed. Boy, you will meet. How many has ever been oppressed? Let's see your hands, okay? Don't be ashamed of it. 
Welcome to the club. Who are downtrodden. How many ever felt just downtrodden? You know, you're the least in the family. <laughs> bruised. How many people have we been bruised? Crushed. Broken down by calamities. Okay? All right. So we're learning something. And so those issues have to be dealt with because they affect our relationships with people. Now, I want you to listen to me now. I know that there, there, there's times when, and, and I'm, not, I'm just talking, but there's times when divorce is necessary. But I'm saying to you, there's a lot of times it's not necessary, and the reason that they get divorced is because they're bruising each other and killing each other by the way they talk to one another. Now, I'm just as being down to earth as I can and honest. Does I get any amens on that? Okay, we're all guilty, so much. But why do you talk like you do? Why do you act like you do? Why are you reacting? Why do I react? Boy, I used to have a tremendous reaction because I had deep anger in me, deep anger, unresolved. And I look back and I wonder, what was I angry about now? But I came in my life for, I guess, when I got about, I was saved at 26 years old. And when I started moving forward for God, it's like I met a steel wall. What is that? I couldn't go forward. What is that? And God begin to teach me. For two years, I went in total combat with spirits of darkness that was pressing against me to keep me from going forward in God. And those weaknesses that I had in the flesh and in my mind and those hurts and those areas that were not healed was the very thing he used to oppress me. Okay? And so God began to say, no, if you're going to get delivered from the demonic powers of darkness, you're going to have to come to a place, and i got to move here, i only got 45 minutes, but you're going to have to come to a place to get that stuff healed up and then get rid of that ground. Now the ground is the hurts, the wounds, the oppression. I never knew what depression was. And one day I walked outside and all of a sudden this depression came on me. And I went in to Susan. I said, honey, gosh, what am, what am I experiencing here? And all of a sudden it just cleared up. Susan prayed and it cleared up. But then afterwards it got worse and worse and worse. But that's, that's so and so. But what I want to do tonight is try to establish, you can leave that on the board, to establish some things, and um, uh, Michelle's going to help me, and I want you to draw the line and the, uh, the cross with that. Now, this is a little illustration. I think that board is pretty well. <clears throat> and this is why so many people sometimes get confused when you talk about inner healing. Let's start with on page uh, yeah, you go, salvation. There you go. Page six tonight. Last week, I think that's where we went. Okay, we got the cross there. Salvation. Let me tell you. On the cross, everything that we would ever need was done for us when Christ died on the cross. But here's what I want you to see to start with. Would you put Jesus right here and put uh, melodies on the cross with Jesus right underneath it? And everybody put their own name on there. See, th this is not negative because everything that we hate about ourselves Listen to me now, and you've got to appropriate this by faith. 
you got to know, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with Christ on the cross. You were in, you were in Christ. Let me share this with you. You see this Bible right here? This is you. This is us. This is the human race. This is the Adam race. God put the Adam race in Christ. And where is the Adam race now? In Christ. You take this Bible and you put it in a tub of water. Whatever that Bible experiences, that right there experiences it. Or that's you. And you're put in, into Christ. Everything that that Bible experiences, that sheet experiences it also. You can throw it off a hill and go way down and hit. You experience that. So everything, God put us all in Christ. And when Christ was put on the cross, he put us all in. All right, very good. Christ became our substitute. And so we all died. Say, I died. I died. Now, you got to know it. I know it. Boy, do I know it. I've walked this thing out for a long time. And it, 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 was, while I sp it was the time I spoke it. But I remember when the revelation came into me, Bob, I don't care what manifests in my mortal body. Listen to me now. I don't care what manifests in your life. It was taken care at Calvary. Now listen to what so many people are in deception. Deceived by the enemy. The enemy can deceive. And if you don't know what to do with your thoughts and your feelings, you will go after your feelings. Are you listening now? Negative feelings. Thank God we can have good feelings. But so many of those past feelings that are negative, we have yielded to them so much. What you, be, what you yield to becomes your what? Yeah. Master. That's in Romans 6. Let's turn to there. Turn to Romans 6. I know I'm, I just do the best I can. That's all I can do. Uh, there's so much. I mean, you know, I'm, it's, it, you just, I'm doing the best I can. All right, Roman, because you gotta, you got to know some things here. i got to try to, uh, and it'll take a, three or four weeks to unfold it all. But there's some things you just got to know. And if you don't know, you're just, just going, to, going to mess up. That's all I can say. Uh, what is that now? Melanie's in Jesus. Huh? Melanie is in Jesus. Okay, Melanie in Jesus. I got you. Very good. So when Jesus was crucified, who was crucified with him? Okay, nail that down. Now, the devil comes in and begins to give you a bad feeling or a bad thought towards somebody. What is your knowledge? Your knowledge. See, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Your knowledge is, no, that was crucified with Christ. I do not have to yield to it. See, the enemy, people don't know that, that demonic powers are working against people to keep them from carrying out the will of God to keep us out of our blessings, to keep us from having real Holy Ghost fellowship with the living God. You, you must understand that, okay? Now, let's read uh, Romans 6. Uh, let's start with verse uh, 6 real quick. Like, All right, I wish we could read the whole chapter, but it just takes so much time. We know, and now remember we've been talking about there's certain things we can know. Say, I know. Oh, what do you know? I hope you know that our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him. Put that on the board, uh, Willie, verse 5. Well, let's move up to, uh, oh boy, <laughs> let's move, <laughs> excuse me, Willie, move up to three real quick, like, I, I just got to bring this thing down. Can you see it? Can you all see that up there? You see that up there? All right. Are you ignorant? If we, boy, he's not trying to insult us, but see, he knows that they are ignorant, and that's why he's writing this down. Now, uh, Linda was sharing with me about something about people misunderstanding grace. Oh, God will forgive you. Yeah, he'll forgive you. There's grace. I am what I am by the grace of God. There's grace. The blood does cleanse us. 
But if we willfully just go ahead and do things and know it's against God, and we say, well, you know, I know this is wrong, but God's going to forgive me, you're in error and deception. Are you listening? It don't work that way. Now, I don't have time to go into that in depth. Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us, who's all of us? Who's he talking to? Christians. Re- Shield of faith, the Christians. Remember what I told you about? Find out what he's talking to. All of us Christians, that's Jew and Gentile alike that are Christians, have been baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his what? Death. Death. The old Adam in us died and was buried, and we're free from it. So don't let him boss you around, because he will stick his head up every once in a while. And if you follow him, you'll get into trouble. Now listen, move to the next verse, 4, 6, 4. We were buried, therefore, with him. We were buried with him. When? When we were water baptized. <clears throat> him by the baptism into death. So, Ron, we didn't get a chance to baptize you, but you're a goner. All right? <laughs> and all the God's people said, Amen. <laughs> so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might habitly live and behave in, behave in newness of life. Now, you've got to remember, everything is by faith. The just shall live by faith. You have to believe first. I believe. I believe. And I speak what I believe. Remember what Paul said? I speak what I believe, not what I feel. The old man, your old man may act up. And you say, I believe he was crucified with Christ. He was buried with Christ. Verse, the next verse, five. For if we have become one with him by sharing a death. Remember? We died on the cross with him. Like his, like his. Now you accept that by faith. We shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life lived for God. Now listen, this is important to understand because there's going to be a transition in people's lives because all the negative, once you establish that, nail that down in your life, and you accept it by faith, listen to me, this is important, you're going to come into a, a resurrected life. There's going to be a new life bubbling up inside of you. You must understand that, and you must be able to tap in to understand that. So it's getting rid of the old and a new life that will manifest in you. Your spirit should be just as free as it can be, clean, peaceful, and just as free as it can be. Now we have an adversary that comes along, You're in your rest now. The Bible talks about rest. Hebrews talks about rest. Enter into your rest. Christ is our rest. Okay? All right, next. Six. We know. Oh, boy. We know. What do we know? Huh? What do we know? That what? That we know that our old (coughs) Bob... Unrenewed Bob, self. Everybody say self. self. How many of you know what the problem is in marriage? Self. Self. Tell me, huh? Self. I did, I, what was that again? Self. self. That's true. But don't put yourself down because you know why? Because self died with Christ. If you know that, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with Christ. And God counts those things that be not as though they were. Now, when that reality comes into you, you'll be surprised the breaking and the deliverance that comes into your being when you grasp that by faith and the spirit of wisdom and revelation rests upon you and you see that you, the part of you, you have struggled with that old man so long, but now you know he was crucified with Christ. Now, the devil will come along and try to deceive you and say, you weren't crucified. Look, look at that temper rising up in you. Well, I knew exactly what to do if any of that rose up in me. 
Because I know that that was dealt with. Whatever, whatever that old Bob Tilton can manifest, that old Adam, whatever, I don't care what it is, jealousy, ungodliness, lust, hatred, malice, envy. I know I'm going to get everybody depressed if I keep on. It was dealt with at Calvary. Now, here's the mistake that people have. We don't know that, and we just go ahead and yield to that old man, let him have his way, and destroy our marriage. Destroy our relationship with one another. Isn't this good? Amen. I love it. Oh, that's delivered. I'm trying to move you to the... All right, now look. Self was, nailed, oh, self was nailed to the cross with him in order our bodies, which is the instruments of sin, might be made ineffective. <coughs> look at it now. And inactive for evil that we might no longer be the slaves of sin. Oh, glory to God. Just go ahead and say, I'm free. Hello, free. Meet free. Let's go over the. We know. We know. We know. What do we know? Hmm? What do we know? Nailed to the cross with him. Na oh, boy. Give me a hammer and nail. Give me a, just nail it. How many of you know you, you, sometimes you can't nail yourself to the cross? You know, you know I've, I've seen people try to do that by works. So you nail this. Oh, got that one nailed. Oh, you nail your feet. But I still got that arm there to get into trouble with. So the Lord did it for us. Aren't you glad the Lord did it for you? See, there's more to this salvation than just going to heaven when you die. He wants his children to walk down here in victory. All right? Now, I wish I learned this overnight. <laughs> You're to, looking at a man that took quite a few years. <laughs> but, but I know it now. <laughs> All right, let's read that. We know that our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him. Why? In order that our bodies, which is the instruments of sin, might be made of ineffective and inactive for evil, that we might no longer be the slaves of sin. Powerful. Powerful. Now, <clears throat> we deal with people to get their wounds and their hurts healed. But if they go right back into the same relationship where people are beating them over the head all the time, it's a vicious circle. Are anybody listening? Yes, sir. See? And I'm not a mean man. Am I talking too loud? But well, I am getting excited <laughs> because, because this thing works. Because I've been living in it for a long time. And I tell you, I am enjoying the Lord. I'm enjoying the freedom. But stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. And do not be entangled again in a yoke of bondage. Now let's nail that down. Let's move to verse 7. Real quick like. For when a man dies, he is freed, loose, delivered from the power of sin among men. God, give me an example. that. Um, let's read that again. For when a man dies, and where did we die? Or a woman. Where did we die? With Christ. Don't try to kill yourself. You can't do it. You know how well I know? I tried. It won't work. You've got to accept by faith that he did it for you. Are you listening? He did it for you. Now, here's the problem. People sit in our office back there for inner healing. And they have given in to the old nature so much, God will heal them. But if they don't change, their way of thinking, if they don't know what God has already done for them, they'll go right back in 
the same thing again, be back next year with the same problem, same wounds, same hurt. Anybody listening? I'm not a mean man, but I've been around and we've done dealt with enough people and we've saw that. Now many people <coughs> can really get into the Word of God and get that washing where the Holy Spirit will take the Word of God and heal them. For when a man dies... Death is a deliverance. See, we've always looked at death. <sighs> Who wants to die? <laughs> I mean, that's the human element. I mean, you enjoy your comfort where you're at, you know. You, it's, it's fun. But look what fruit comes from that which you will have to suffer later on, and everybody around you will suffer. You, you, you see that? If we understand that. Now, <coughs> you've got to identify some things in your life. What is the sin that so easily besets you? Remember Hebrew talks about getting rid of the sin that so easily besets you? See, once you do something over and over and over and over, it becomes a habit. How many of you know it's hard to break habits? Man, it is so hard. And many times if we do certain things, our bodies get addicted to that particular thing. For, for, for like me, I always like uh, sweets. So when I'm riding down the, uh, the road and we pass... Um, the donut place. How many has ever just whoop, drove right in there? Huh? Oh, them hot donuts and that light, you know, and you get that dozen and you say, well, after this I won't, you know. But see, after a while you realize that you're beginning to swell up. <laughs> anyway, let's move on, Bob. Cut out the humor. No humor. So, so here's the way it works with me. I go, I go by and I say, man, and when I, I went shopping today with Susan again, and we go by the the, um, the the all the sweets, the candy, and the and the oil, uh, the the crackers, and the cakes, and the pies, and and I want to put about three or four of them in the basket. But I, that scripture comes to my mind. No, Bob, don't you remember? Now I can have a donut every once in a while. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying not like I used to. I used to eat a dozen donuts at one time. Come on, church. Oh, you, you eat too? <laughs> so, so, look, for when a man dies, he is freed. So when will, listen to me now, when will you be freed from that particular thing that's besetting you? When you die and you know you're, you died to it, it will not pull on you anymore. Now you know you got deliverance. So what is the answer? Die to it. Now the Holy Spirit, we're not in this thing alone, church. The Holy Spirit knows exactly how to kill that desire or that particular thing that, that so easily besets you and me. Okay? So you've got to walk arm in arm with the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation that I might see that I have died, therefore I am loosed, freed, delivered from the power of sin. Right. Sin breaks out in many different manifestations. Oh, I've seen sin. Lord, give me the words. Wow. Wow. He looks like a saint. How many of you? It, 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 uh, sometimes it's disguised, but deception is behind it. Here's a millionaire. I'll sit by him every Sunday. What's behind that? You know, it may be true love. Greed, you know what greed is? 
I'm his best friend. Then I find out he doesn't have any money, and I said, over here. <laughs> Come on, church. Huh? Somebody walks into the church and got diamonds on, and we could say, sit over here. Somebody walks in with raggy clothes, sit on the floor back there. <laughs> James says you sin. But anyway, see, you got to recognize sin. But we've been, listen, we've been loosened, delivered from the power of sin among men. Amen. Nail it down. Nail it down. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When, you, when this becomes alive to you and you start saying no to everything that's ungodly, Titus chapter 2, verse 11, say no to, to, to ungodliness. You're going to find yourself in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a mixture of things. And the devil's going to try to deceive you and everything else. But you hold true. Know that word. Let it burn into your mind. Now, let's see. We want to go. Let's go to 15 real quick. All right. Time is going. I ain't even started. I want to write something on the board. All right. Uh, 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 9, verse 9. Romans, verse 9. And we haven't even got it on our sheet. But i gotta, I got to give you the answer. for Because we know that Christ, the anointed one, being once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. Put that down on, in your own life. Now read it. Because we know that Bob was in Christ, the anointed one, being once raised from the dead, will never die again. We'll never die again. Death has been annulled. First Timothy, uh, I think it's second uh, uh, verse 10. Put that on the board real quick for me. Uh, uh, amplified. Second uh, Timothy chapter two, I'm sorry, chapter one, verse 10. Second Timothy. Second Timothy one ten. It is that purpose and grace which we now have made known and has fully disclosed and made real to us through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who annulled death. What do you mean by annulled? You know what annulled is? We all do? Explain it to me later on. <laughs> and made it of no effect and brought life and immorality and Im immunity from eternal death to life through the gospel. Meditate on that. That is powerful. That is powerful. Is that better? There you go. You can see it. I'm sorry. So, it all happened at Calvary. Everything happened at the cross. All right? And go to the next verse in uh, Romans 6. Real quick, like to, um, which verse was it? I don't know if I forgot now. Uh, nine, nine. nine. Okay, go to nine, quick, like. Because we know that Christ, you know, okay, or the next one. Has, we, we already, ten. There we go. For by the death he died, he died to sin, Ending his relation to it once and for all. And the life that he lives, he is living to God in unbroken fellowship with him. Now that's important. Think of your relationship with sin. It's been broken. Cut. Broken. you got to see that. Okay? And therefore now we have unbroken fellowship with him. Sin shall not have dominion over us because we died to sin. And our relationship with it has been broken. We owe it nothing. Go to the next verse real quick, 11. And so now Paul says, Even so consider yourselves also dead to sin. Everybody say, I'm dead. I'm dead. Good, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> to sin. And your relation to it, broken. 
You don't owe it anything. You don't have to obey it. Oh, it'll pull at you. Sometimes it comes... Smells like donuts. You smell that, Ron? I think it's over here. Now, wait a minute, my relationship with it is broken. And I don't, I'm not going to do it. All right, but alive to God. I'm alive to God. We're not, we're not flirting with sin. We're not entertaining sin anymore. We are alive unto God. Now, become God conscious and not sin conscious. You will go around a vicious circle if you are always sin conscious. The Holy Spirit will tell you if you have sinned. You get into this Word, and the Word of God will tell you. It's simple, it's not complicated. Other than you have no relationship with it. You don't have to think about it. You have no relationship at all with it. No, you have a relationship. We have a relationship with God now. Unbroken relationship with God Almighty. Unbroken fellowship with Him in Christ. Go to the next verse real quick. And I want to start preaching on what I really want to preach on. <clears throat> All right. Let not sin therefore rule. Now whose job is that? Listen. I want everybody to look at me. I'm 80 years old. Anybody ever think I had, I've ever had any temptation? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look what you in your face. Yeah. <laughs> look at little old me. You th do you realize the temptations I have had as a pastor? Hmm. I would not be standing here if I did not know. I have no obligation whatsoever to give in to this little feeling for about a 20-minute feeling thing. Do you realize if I gave in to sin and y'all found out about it? I still love you. Hmm? I still love you. Thank you. I appreciate that. See, we've got to remember the domino effect. What you do affects me. What you do affects this church. What I do affects this church. What I do affects you. So you've got to accumulate all of that and realize no, my relationship with people is more important than for me to have my way all the time. My relationship with my wife is more important than for me to have my way all the time with my wife. Right, Joseph? Right. Remember that now. My relationship with you, sometimes people tell me things and they're all wrong, but I don't ever say nothing. I say, but Lord, at the right opportunity, Lord, you'll let me say it. Because at that moment, I wouldn't say it, say it with probably the Spirit of God, so I put off the old man, let him die a little bit, and then, Lord, if you want me to say something, fine. If not, I don't have to protect myself. I know where I stand with God. Hello? See, you get secure in God that way. Sin will not have dominion over us. Now, if you do sin, like 1 John 1 said, know that God is faithful and just. I don't get up in the morning wanting to, to sin because my relationship has been broken with it. Now, you're going to have temptations. So when that dozen donuts come in the house, you don't have to eat every one of them. Save some for somebody else. All right. Let not sin, therefore rule as king in your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies to make you yield to its cravings and be subject, that's control, under control of it, to its lusts and evil passions. Now, I want to make this very clear. There's times you're going to have Evil desires. Oh, R.W., preach it. I believe it will. 
recognize there's times when you're going to have desires if you're a man for the opposite sex. Tell it like it is, Bob, I believe it will. If you live in the real world, you're going to be tempted. But temptation is not a sin. And you've got to say, no, I died to that. No, I died to that. Let me pin something down. How many in here has got to have the last word? All right, be honest, be honest. Remember, nailed to the cross. You don't have to prove. All right, behave yourself over there, newlyweds. <clears throat> All right, listen. <clears throat> I'm talking to myself, too. Ron, you don't always have to have the last <laughs> What was that? <laughs> Stay away from that, Bob. Okay. All right, let's move to the next one real quick before I get in trouble. And the time is running out. Please hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay. Do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members and facilities to sin as instruments, tools of wickedness. But offer and yield yourself to God as though you have been what? raised from the dead to a perpetual life and your bodily members and facilities to God, presenting them as instruments of righteousness. Decision making. Decision. So here's the decision. Boy, i like to go after that. No. I'm not going to yield to that. I'm going to yield to God. See, it's a decision. When you're going down the road, you've got two roads. One of them is the road of sin. The other one is the road of righteousness. Decide. Simple. Just make a decision to do that. Okay? And that's very important to understand that. Now, let's bring up, let's go ahead here. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. She's going to put that down, and we're going to spend a little while on that. We could go on to the end of that, but uh, <clears throat> remember, our, our relationship, our, relation, our salvation stays there on that line. Jesus, we're saved. You can't get no more saved than you are right now if you're saved, okay? All right? All right. Now, yeah, go down one, all the way down like one. Let's start, say, right here. Yeah, one and two, all right, three, four, seven, eight. What comes after eight? Quick, quick. Nine, nine, thank you, ten. All right, now, all right, all right, put uh, spirit right here. Spirit, our spirit, small, small s. Well, that's good. That's okay. All right, next is soul, and put the mind and emotion by it. And then, then down, there you go. And the will, in it, yeah. Emotions. Is the will in that? No, oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, and then the body. Now, establish once and for all. Are you saved? Can you get any more saved? Now, what happens is, let's just say you sin. Or you, let's just say you do sin. Now, remember that little word, if, First John 1, 9, put it on the board. Now, you're walking in the Spirit. You know, you're walking, okay, and, and, and you're happy. You and Jesus are having a big time. <coughs> and let's say that in your soul, in your mind, let's say all of a sudden, how many in here, have, all of a sudden these thoughts come into your mind and they're not really godly thoughts? Would you raise your hands 100%? Okay, listen, don't claim them. All right, listen, don't claim them them it's either going to come from God mostly it'll come from your own psychic 
out of your own mind, your soul, or out of your emotions, or it will come from, put the devil down here. It, see, if you claim it, you're going down. Everybody look at me. This is important. If you claim it, and you start going to the and say, Lord, forgive me, forgive me. I didn't mean that. No, wait a minute. No, I'm not, say, I'm not accepting it. I know where it came from. I'm not accepting none of that garbage. All right, it's simple. Joseph, here you are. Here's some garbage. Cast it down. Would you pick it up for me, son? <laughs> are, are, are you listening? If you claim it, you're going to be fighting. Thank you so much. You're going to be fighting because he's going to put it there again and again. And, and you're going to feel, look, the, the accusing spirit will come against you. You'll feel condemnation, and you won't have enough of anointing on you to battle him. Do not accept it. Let's just say somebody reacts and says to you, I don't like you. You're nothing but a pain in the neck. I can't stand you. You're ugly, stupid. How many is going to claim it? No. Don't claim it. If you let that get in your psyche, this is what's wrong with a lot of people today. They've heard so much of that garbage and, and claimed it, and it's gotten down into your emotions. All right, uh, Michelle, would you put up uh, at the top, the four things, the, um, uh, there they go, right here. Thoughts produce, there we go. Oh, if you start thinking now, and the time's running out, we've got 10 minutes. We haven't even got into the inner healing yet, but I'm, I'm trying to lay some foundation. We'll keep that on the board. And Thoughts produce what? Attitudes. So the enemy puts that in your mind about yourself. You know you'll never make it. You know, you're the ugly duckly. You're stupid. You're not good looking. How many of you know that would be a lie? <laughs> you're ugly. You're not good looking. Now, Ron, we know that. All right. This is just a law. It is right. You cannot escape it. Everybody look. Your thought, what you're thinking, good or bad, will develop an attitude. All right, let's bring it down where we live. If you think negative about anybody in your family, tell me what type of attitude will you have if you continuously ponder those thoughts what type of attitude, what type of attitude are you developing? A uh, negative attitude. And every time you see that person, it's like you don't want to get around them. Very simple, not complicated. All right, let's just say you keep that attitude. Then what, Joseph? It gets in your, now you're feeling it. You're not feeling the grace of God. You're not feeling the presence of God. You are feeling a negative emotion that the devil has given you thoughts. You didn't cast it down like he did, and you entertained it. It developed an attitude, and now it's got down to, into your emotions, and now you feel negative towards that person or negative, listen to me, about yourself or about God. Or about somebody else. Now listen to me. People need inner healing, but they're going to have to come back and understand this. Because after a while it gets in your emotions, now it's in your behavior. Now you're throwing rocks at Pastor Bob's house. <laughs> <laughs> then it becomes a lifestyle. When you understand these people that's taking guns and shooting people. Somebody tell me what their problem is. Michelle, show us. Right, it starts right there. It starts right there in their thoughts. And now they got an attitude. It's in their emotions, they feel it now. 
which urges them and gives them power to do it. The emotions are built up so much that that gives them enough emotional power to do it, and it goes out into their behavior, and their behavior is they come into, listen, I'm going to say something. I told a Mike, somebody, if they see somebody with guns out there, lock the door, sound alarm. Uh, Frank will blow the trumpet. That means out that door, out that door, get the kids and head out. If they break in, get to the floor. Because it's going to happen more and more and more. See, we've been watching this stuff. Frank and me have been watching this thing for five years. We saw it in the spirit. It's incre- Everything is increasing. Earthquakes, tornadoes. Okay? Be ready. And I would say this. I'm going to say this to you. Have a lot of canned food in your house. Extra canned foods. And in two years, if nothing happens, I'll come by your house and you can fix a good meal for me. (laughs) Just accumulate some stuff. Because if the electricity goes off, nothing in your house or this building or my house is going to work. So better have some charcoal. You better have some. Be prepared. If a, if a uh, hurricane hit, when Hugo hit, 19 days without electricity. 19, 19 days I didn't take a bath. Boy, I was enjoying it. I tell you, I, this is all right. I'm just kidding. Okay, now, just because you feel bad, and I've got to quit here in a minute. Just because you feel bad, your salvation doesn't move. Your position, put position, uh, position, P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N there. Where's Michelle? There she is. Put position up there. That's your position. It does not move. Are you listening? Very important, because the devil may make you think you, you, you've fallen from your salvation. No. If you sin, which is on the board... If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, He is faithful and just, true to His own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to His will in purpose, thought, and action. So remember, we can sin in our minds, we can sin in our emotions, we can sin in our will, okay? We have to understand that. But sin should not be a regular thing. Now, when you first start out, if you were in bad shape like me, which I won't go into, I'm trying to think of what I want to say here. A lot of times, a lot of times it clears our conscience in our own emotions and selves to ask somebody to forgive them if you, if you feel that you've done something wrong. Sometimes it's for ourselves, not so much for God. God has one sacrifice, once and for all, God has forgiven us throughout eternity by the one sacrifice, once and for all. God has nailed that down. But for our own self to clear our conscience from dead works or from trash, we need to speak it out and ask people to forgive us for our own self. Now, you may not have to, but that's always a possibility. How many you understand what I'm talking about? You know, to get that release yourself. Okay? So that's a powerful scripture. Now, sometimes we may be Feeling 10. All right, how many is on the 10 tonight? Joseph, you, you way up here, son. All right, now, uh, one is the best, and you go down. Now, sometimes you may be a five. Does that change your position? No, you're still a Christian. You're still a child of God. Does God still love you? Yeah. So you'll find yourself on this scale up and down. But see, as you mature and grow and get sanctified and trust God to sanctify us spirit, soul, and body, 
1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Now, I want you to reach out and realize God wants to do that work in us. It's not just us doing it mechanically, but we have the Holy Spirit to work. Now, notice, and may the God of peace, everybody say the God of peace, himself sanctify you. Who's going to sanctify you? God. See, you've got to put your faith in God that he is sanctifying you through and through. When, when uh, Willie was talking about faith, it t- that's where we put our, put our faith into what God said he will do. Separate you from profane things. He will separate you from profane things by showing you what they are and make you pure and holy, consecrated to God. And, he, and may your spirit, soul, spirit, soul, and body be preserved, sound, and complete, and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. That's the rapture. Now, that's a process. That's a process. We're all in the process. And if we, if we put the process from 1 to 10, some of us may be 5, 3, maybe 8. But don't be discouraged. Put your faith that God himself is doing it. And cooperate with him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that time's run out. I hope your people have learned something and nailed some things down, and we'll continue this perhaps next uh, Wednesday night, Lord, if you will. And we just thank you now that we might see that you are working in us, making us willing to do your good pleasure. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say with me, Lord, Lord thank, you thank you for sanctifying me. Sanctifying me. Spirit. So, and body, your work, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now rest in him. God bless you. If you need prayer, come up. We'll be glad to pray for you. <laughs> Somebody will put this back in that back closet. I'd appreciate it. Uh.